Assalamu alaikum. Yes, so, before starting a session, I'd like to thank you, the organizer team, Dr. Sharma, and the entire team for giving an opportunity for our research lab to give us a session on flexible thermoelectric. So, yeah, our, our, we, are, we are from the IIIT DM, so like uh, it's a national important institute and it's directly ministry under the ministry. And our laboratory name is My Laboratory. Basically, we work on the energy based materials, like prototyping of the materials, we work on the product development point of view. And I'm, I'm in electronics and communication department basically from, and I'm associated with interdisciplinary design also. And before getting into the today's person, I'll just briefly just shortly say about what is triplatinum. So triplatinum is like we placed in Kanjiburam this district, and we have the greatest advantage of like so since the Chennai is having manufacturing industries and we have design industries and some like it is also the Indian institutes and how it's differ from all others like for example when we see the roadmap of the entire central institutes of India. We can see like the basic science will be like IIC and engineering science analytical will say like NIT and IIT and like IITs and we can say about the humanities like uh, this Tata Institute of Social Science and uh, IAM are there for management and ID for design thinking. So there's a gap between design centric education which means about like a product development or manufacturing point of view. So that is the reason that Triple IDM was started in uh, 2007 it was started and the first institute it was a Jabalpur, Triple IT Jabalpur. Next one was the Triple IT Kanjipuram. So this is a brief about our institute. And now session like uh, before getting into like uh, flexoelectric, uh, flexo thermoelectric as we be doing on it. So first brief, briefly, like almost like last since two and a half days, you are looking on about like CPAC effect and uh, like uh, electrical conductivity, thermal conductivity, all those things. So this all contains about the figure of merit we call it as and that denoted in the form of uh, the thermal rig generator, which means the temperature difference happens, the potential can be generated. Even it may be a 0 0.1 degree or 0 0.2 degree as the browser was mentioned like news of Calicut. So the precision is more important in thermal rig. That's why now people are looking on an verbal based applications but because the CBAC we know like it's a 200 years ago like it was recently last few months back the people are celebrated like it's a 200 years of the CBAC was developed but the thing still it's not commercial because CBAC was very older than the photovoltaic but still it's not come application the reason behind that is people are working at the bulk materials and they're working on majorly on the high temperature applications but the problem with the high temperature is once it we heat it uh, we need to maintain the delta T but when you have a high temperature, one end, other end will be the bulk material can absorb the heat in the from other end also. So due to that reason, the delta T can't able to increase or not maintain properly. Because of that, the bulk was much not interfering in the industry's application. That's why the people are nowadays moving on like environmental friendly device materials like oxide base or like example, uh, green synthesis applications like chemical synthesis, rotors, sputtering methods, deposition coating, they're moving on it. And here we we'll say like, uh, this is like a CPAC effect which we can see as everyone shows like potential difference the power generate. I just keep on this and I'll move to applications of thermolytic. Before getting into flexibility, I just showed applications. Maybe some people are not maybe aware about the what type of applications currently in the industry. So for example, we can see Seiko thermolytic watch, which is the first watch, which is the wearable based devices, was released in uh, like uh, Japan. And it's still available in Amazon.com USA. It's 200 USD dollar. Still, it's available. And the basic phenomenon of this watch is it's work on one length thermolytic principle. It doesn't have any battery. So the watch can be able to work on body heat alone. And it have a layer, like it's a thin film kind of layer they have on the watches. Based on that, the heat can be absorbed and that heat can be counted as a potential. And forward to that, the browser, like working in China, he developed the Walkman player. So the Walkman player have a battery, but after a certain duration, it may dry off. So instead of drying off, so what he made it is, so charging based devices. So whenever it's going to less than the threshold limit, it can able to charge it by themselves. So that is not required separate of charging is not required on this. So that's why the browser was uh, made it on prototype. And even Nokia also done the work on the thermoelectric. So Nokia E, e is nothing but environmental CU is copper. So when we see this mobile phone, you can see the copper grids bottom. So the copper grid says about like, so as we know, like heaters or anywhere in the heating application, we use copper because copper is the highly thermal conducting material as we know. So because of that reason, so the people have made it the copper as a backside. So when you put it on your pocket, the copper can absorb the heat 
or when you're holding on your body, it can absorb the heat, it can charge the mobile phone. So this was released in 2011 for social experiments in only London, still the, almost a decade. They find out the difficulties, they're improvising now. Nokia was doing improvising of that. If you have more detail, if you want this, you can check in the website of Nokia uh, e-newsletter. So there's a separate web page. In that you can see what is the application, what type of watches or mobile phones they're working on, so set you eco-friendly oriented. And the next one is activity based. Because some people may talk about like uh, different uh, based on the activity. So for example, if we are sitting in ideal case, now in the air conditioned room, our body temperature may be the difference of like one to two degree. But just assume if you're going for the staircase to stepping up for one floor or two floor, so our body heat will be keep on increased, right? Because we have more activity, the power can increase. So that is the way the density can increase. So that's a, the startup company, Orange Lab, what they made is they made it like people go for jogging or walking, so the power can be increased. So instead of going for charging for thermolytic like continuously for 12 hours, if they go for jogging or walking, 15 minutes it can charge it for the talkable 15 minutes talk, it can able to charge it quickly. And the next one is Fujifilm with the Ace uh, Laboratory of Japanese Institute. And they developed the polymer film. For example, as I said, example like uh, room temperature, we have air conditioned room, outside is high temperature. So we want to make a sticker on the windows. When they make a polymer sticker, the outside temperature can trap it and inside room temperature also we can give delta T. So based on that, they can increase the potential. And here they give a demonstration of body heat and room temperature. Difference of that, they'll show like a mobility of the cars, like just on and off kind of thing. They'll show it. And now so our work like. So before getting into a flexible thermality, we show like a piezoelectric effect. So piezoelectric is well-known material. Everyone knows like piezoelectric, Whenever we have a stress and strain happen in the full entire lattice, so then it can produce the, due to the bombardment of the atoms, the power can be generated and our replacement of the mobility of the atoms, power can be generated. So there are many phenomena we have. So here we can see flexolytic is, so this is not flexothermolytic, it's a flexolytic. So similar to piezoelectric, so we know piezoelectric and the triboelectric is like a shear force. So surface to surface interaction. But flexolytic is, it is also similar to piezoelectric but it is on the only the surface layer. So for example, I have a pen like this, the lighter. So for example, I have a presentation pointer. If I touch it little on surface, if the polymer is coated on the surface, if I touch, it can stress and strain happen in the surface level. So that can able to produce the potential power. So th that is what like a flexoelectric, uh, we can say about it. So it is basically talk about the surface interaction of, uh, basically on the polymer material only, the people are utilizing on this. And uh, this is the like atomic wise presentation. Here we can able to see like uh, the atoms are placed over here, the piezo flex. And here we can see so how the piezoelectric happen and here flexolytic. So the surface layer. So we can able to see the electrons happen on the only the surface layer of so the anion cation can combination it can able to produce a potential power. And these are the some basic literatures which shows about the polymer based literature materials. And here we can able to see like cell power devices, which is on the piezoelectric. So which is on the piezoelectric only, generally piezoelectric PVDF material, which we know like it's a high stability material on the mechanical strengthening property. Based on that, they generate the piezoelectric materials. And forward to that, we can see about uh, flexoelectric generator in na nano level. So this was what done in the uh, like uh, film and the polymer material. So top of the polymer material, they use the PZT materials and uh, like a lead, zirconium, titanium based materials they used. And forward to that, the, they use the, like a magnesium oxide also, they coat the top of that. So based on that, the, it will be like surface charging. It's like they're charging through the capacitor also. They can see how much the potential was generated from the power was utilized from the devices. And this is the last one. So it's very, like a very few paper only available on flexolytic because still it's people are utilizing on the, uh, like exploring on flexol. It is like a next generation of technology which is like uh, we seen about a piezoelectric, tribo, then flexo. So flexo is like a next generation of surface level of interactions. And here we can see the people tried with the coating based materials and here they work on the microphones. So whenever the people have a microphone, the earphones, so the microphone can able to charge it based on the our speech. So because when you speak, the vibration will happen in the surface level. So based on that way, they can able to harvest the energy. Even like example, the one of the Chinese professor has done in COVID time, and self uh, degradable of uh, uh, like uh, mask. So what will happen the mask when you want to make it as a like uh, sanitize, 
they'll keep it in the UV. So what he made it is, it's like when you have a potential power generated from the mask, it can cure, cure it and it can able to kill the germs by heating itself. So that way he tried out on this way of flexibility effect. And this is the way we want to show it like we are taking like a thermolytic and flexolytic combining of that we want to show it in the shoe. So we will make it like the smart shoes which can able to harvest the energy by the thermolytic as well as the flexolytic both combinedly hybridly we can integrate it. And as, as we know like we want to start with as the professor like uh, I did okay was mentioned initially start with the computational synthetical work. So it's a similar way that we also start with the computational like a console. So we do with the computational first initial to understand the material behavior and the stability and the mechanical property of the material. Then we can go with the device fabrication. So this is the computational for the TEG and this is computational for TEG and the polymer enclosure. So we have a polymer enclosure on this TEG and we'll study about the contour graph of the heating and temperature and forward to that we'll see about the electrical connectivity of the devices also. So combining of this, we can get like, uh, when we say like a two leg, it can able to give like a 0.16 of millivolt. And uh, when we say like a four leg, it's higher it's showing. So the potential was increasing when the array of legs has, like PN junction legs was increased. And so now we can show this. Like here we can see P -tip, P and N junction, which we created as a single device. From this device, what we can able to see is, you can see the first figure when the people press it on the finger, they touch it, the device, it can show 1.1 millivolt of 1 pn junction and when we keep on press the stress the stress was applied on the device we can see 20.6 millivolt was generated so whenever the stress and strain happen on the polymer material it will acting as a flexolytic when you touch directly it will act as a thermolytic so hybrid nature we can take the potential power and this is the fabrication route which we taken up and here first we will take a module design like we design something, how many pairs and how much the devices has to be developed and all those things. And they, we use like uh, vinyl cutter, which is making for electrode deposit, electrode to make a form of the physical node to make it. Once the electrode is developed like this, then we'll put the PN junction. Uh, like after the PN junction, we'll make it like a hybrid layer. So once we made it, then we use a polymer composite, which is giving flexibility effect. We use generally silicon composite polymer. So that will give the flexibility high potential, which we can able to get in the stress time. And then we'll put in a vertical axis for the uniformity of the polymer. And then finally the device will become like this. So these are the steps which we involve for the fabrication of the module. And these are the different way. So this is like without, uh, like a first one is with pressure and without pressure. So how the potential was generated. And I think uh, it's, it's not visible. I'll, I'll skip these two slides. I'll show you here. So here you can see the hair dryer. So whenever we put the hair dryer, we can see able around like uh, 2 millivolt it was generated and whenever the higher temperature was done it can get 6 millivolt it can able to generate so the potential was keep on increase when the temperature is giving along with that whenever people give the stress and strain also based on that also will give so in the hair dryer we can get a hot air along with the vibration also right because hair is give more intense the vibration also we can get it from the surface level so both we can harvest so that's why the potential was increased when we see about here and then we'll go with the hot plate and measurement, like when the delta T, to know about the high temperature of delta T, and it was showing almost like, example, you can see, it was like a six millivolt, it was generated, and when we see here, nine millivolt, it was generated. So these are the different way of approaches, and even the person way, standing on this. If you're going as a prototype for the shoe, we want to see about it, so how it can be impact for the device in the back case, yeah. it, instead of fitting in the work, like shoe. So when we see the person weight, and with respect to that, pressure applied on that, how the potential was generated. It was generated almost like 1.2 millivolts and 1.5 millivolts. And when pressure is keep on increasing, the weight is increased, 2.8 volts. So it can able to generate it. The potential was keep on increased. And then we want to know about the utility of the material. Then we'll go with the UTS machine. Like we get to know about the mechanical property of the devices, like stress and strain happen, how the devices withstand. Like example, up to 200 times or 2,000 times or 3,000 times. The number of cycles stress and strain happen, how the device can withstand the durability nature. That we'll do with the UTS machine and we can see like uh, device one, which is a different composition of the polymer silicon, which is giving highest potential than the device. And this is the real time one. And here we can able to see like, uh, so the shoe which we made it and the top view, side view and the cross-sectional view. And here we can see like the device which we put it, we put it on the 
belly of the shoe and then the person can able to walk it with the data of the IoT. We can able to measure the temperature, we can measure the voltage and power. So all those things we can able to calculate with the data logger. And then we tried out the different persons and different sample. Sample in the means different person we call it as. So because person to person that body heat also will vary and the pressure also vary. So example we show here like a different persons based on the output of the first device and second device like as a composition base and the potential was how it's generating, how it happened, all those things we show here. And then the final outcome of that is like, we can see here the thing is like, so when the people going for the stepping, it's this 20 millivolt, and whenever the people go up and stepping down from the staircase, it's giving almost 60 millivolt. The 60 millivolt was the highest one which we received on the 10, 12 pair of the PN junction of the devices, which can able to give it like highest voltage of this, which are macro size of the material. So, So this is the way we did like uh, whenever the person walk the thing and it can able to me measure on the portable CRO data can be measured with on continuous mode. And these are some references on the flexolithic and the flexothermolytic there is no such article right now in the market and we also filed a patent on this flexothermolytic we didn't publish it. And so acknowledgement to my group of students so working with us so because without, without them we cannot give come up with an innovative idea and the funding agencies who are help us to bring it more potential as a product. So we have like different funds from DST and uh, I care which we received recently for the veterinary application for harvesting for self powered devices for physiological monitoring which we received. And uh, so this is my email ID if you have anybody willing to uh, for joining PhDs or like a masters in internship program for project you can write an email to me always. And the one thing is like we in internship we will give at least five to six months. If you're ready to work, you're always welcome to do. One month, two months, we won't encourage because we cannot give any productivity on that. And the next thing is like uh, this is way which we done, but I just give some more examples which we did in our lab as a product level. So this is the one, the first thermolytic, first generation in our lab which we made it. So forward to this. And here we can see that device is generally we need twist, roll, bend, whatever we want. And we, here you can see zero voltage in the room temperature. But when the person came to body temperature, you can see 6.3 volt, which is nine part of the PN junction, which is producing highest voltage. And the next thing is like, uh, so this is the traditionally people work on the pi type of material, which is like a top and bottom we have electrodes. But when we see here, we try to remove that. As per theoretically, they'll say if the electrode is removed, as a pi junction, the top layer which is connected with this PN junction concept, then the potential can increase. But when we tried out experimentally, we failed on that. Because the potential was not generated for the bulk material, but thin film it was better. It came up. And this is the one thin film which we made two pair of junction. And the previously nine pair of the PN junction which we showed as a nine volt, as a six volt, six millivolt as output. But here you can see two pair of PN junction which is giving the temperature here is showing body temperature is 34.6 and room temperature 34.4. The 0.2 degree, which we can able to see here almost like uh, 38.9. So 38.9 voltage, millivoltage can be produced on the two pair of PN junction. And if the body heat is increased, 35.4, 0 0.6 degree, we can able to generate almost 43.2 millivolt. We can able to generate it from these devices. And this also like a thinnest device. So like no nowhere ever like we can see in the published works also no one has done it the thinnest device which is giving highest potential and this one also we filed a patent on this and these are the patents which we made it like a prototyping working and we made as a filed as a patent and the next one is this I'll skip it which I already explained about it and the next one I'll go with the uh, like something different interesting work like called like uh, for example we are in the uh, different climate zones every day. So when the people are having, so I'm, I'm basically from Chennai, I just give an example for the Chennai climate zones. When we see the lowest temperature in January is like 20 degree and maximum is 30 degree. But human body is comfortable between 22 to 27 degree generally, in general, as per ICMR and the WHO database. But if it's higher or lower, the people are not comfortable. Some people may get rashes or some people may get some different cases. So we want to make it some jacket for this it's like a reverse concept of thermolytic, which is called like a Peltier effect, which we study in the schools. When you give heat, 
it's a feedback effect, we can get the delta T base potential power. And when you give power, the potential base, we can get the heat or cold, we can get it. So that, that way we tried out on this. And when we survey the market, we can see the US based product. This work was done like almost three years back. It's still we working on as a proof of concept we made. Now we are moving on to the startup industry. And here we can see the cold one is giving like India one of the flow thermal lab. So they're making it only for the colding purpose. And another people are working on only for the heating, like a uh, wired connection, traditional way. But we assume that we want to make it a single jacket which can give heat or cold based on the climate zone. So the people can wear the jacket, whether they can change the power, positive or negative, they can give it heat or cold, or else they can wrap, uh, reverse the jacket, they can get heat or cold. So either way we can do it. Whether you can change the polarity of the potential when you're giving input for the jacket, or else we can reverse the jacket. Either way we can achieve the heat or cold. And here is the jacket which we made as a proof of concept. Here we can see like jacket patches which we made it. And these patches is based on the ergonomic structure. Because our body have blood vessels which carry the bloods on those points which can tap it and the heat can absorb and the potential power can be like the potential heat can be transferred to the end part of the body. So that way we made it and the potential and here you can see room temperature is hot. It is like almost 37 degree and we can see the cold which is like a 32 degree. So like pleasure minus 5 degree I can heat or cold I can able to do it from the room temperature application. So this is like a cold and the patches you can see hot. So when I reverse the polarity and the potential which we are giving for this is 2.8 ampere, it's very less power, current and the voltage is 0.1 volt only. So current will be little higher, still we are modified with the next version as a thin film. So in this thin film application we can see, so room temperature is showing like a 28 and when we see heating it goes 40 degree. So the heating can go higher than 10 degree because the reason it's a thin film material like we made it like a sputter coated material and over that we made our own patent of that and different structures we can give different potential heat can be generated and this is the way inner garment we made right now we, we didn't go for the jacket because inner garment is more comfortable than the jacket so we can directly contact with the inner garment we made a uh, inner garment of that and we put the jacket uh, and we made a patches of that thin film and it can able to give the heating or cold so up to 40 degree from the room temperature so almost like a 10 degree plus a or minus we can able to do. Right now this was we done for like uh, just for heating purpose, the cooling also we done on this. And this also we published, patent was published and uh, even international patent also we done on this. And next one is physiological sensors. So this I'll show you like, um, we make a, like a temperature coating and this is like a passive sensors, which is doesn't require any battery for this. And the sensor can give the stress and strain happen on the body. So whenever the people have some stress and strain, like this was like we did for the nearby sports academy people because we are in near to the sports Tamil Nadu sports academy. So the people muscle get strain on sometimes when they go for the bloods. So they want to predict the early direction. So for that case we done earlier, but now we are moving on the neonatal cases. So we made it on the neonatal case, and uh, so this is our patches we see made electrodes which is doesn't require any potential. And normally the people use gel electrode. And here you can see one gel electrode, one is like our electrode which is like this. And the both is giving like the same potential it was giving on that. And this is ECG which we made for male, like uh, for adults, and then we're moving on for the neonatal. So right now this is the work which we're doing for the neonatal, which they can make it like a blanket. So it's like a non-contact measurement system. Whenever they have a piezoelectric principle which we applied on this, the people can able to trap the signal of ECG signals also, they can trap it. And, uh, and this is also DAPA work, which is currently we are in IIT Madras, we, incubating kind of thing it's this work and we made it this is also like us passive sensors whenever the diaper get moisture we can able to predict it what is the volume of the moisture has happened for the neonatal case and these two works are for the especially for the neonatal care we are working on for tie up with the, some of the hospitals we're working on it and the last one is thermodynamic application for the breast cancer also like colorimetry effect when we see here like uh, normally people go with the traditional way of this is like a radiation based antenna measurement system, but antenna have a radiations, so commercially, but this is like active devices, but we want to move it on the passive devices, so which is doesn't have like any backscatter electron. So that is the case we're moving on the passive devices. And here we can see whenever, whenever we see the body, like the breast, the upper part of the part of the body only get most of the induce on the breast cancers. So we want to predict it that on the lab scale, like a home scale setup. So if we'll give some we made it some clothing textile and the clothing base they can wear it as a jacket and they can see it in the mirror 
and they can see it in the mobile phone itself. So how far the color changes happen, colorimetry effect. And that way we tried out on the initially on this and the polymer films was done on this and then finally it looks like, so when you make in the mobile phone photo, the jacket you can see, so mobile phone we can see different colors. So how the colors change and what is happening on the like structural effect of the body, whether it is like routine case, it's not a quick day to day you have to do, randomly you can do it, but it will save the data, it will show about what is like abnormal changes happen in your body or not, how it happened. So this is like a homemade kit. And forward to this, we made some potential applications also. E-waste related. We're more keen about the e-waste because they recently like Indian Movie is promoting our startup industry for e-waste also. Because when technology coming up, the older one where it goes, it's like a trash. But instead of trash, we can reuse or remake something other application. So for that reason, in our college, more ink cartridges are wasted. So we want to use that as a printing material for the micro materials. So we make it and we design our own like uh, 3D printer. Like uh, each pin we configured and we make it as a printing of that. And uh, this is like X, Y axis as is uh, CD drive. The whole CD drive will take a drive of that. And that drive is using as X, Y axis of making layer by layer like additive manufacturing kind of thing. We can make it and that can able to print it on. And it can able to print it like we can make it how far we want to make the print like it should be like a wire printing or very thinner printing. So all those things we can do it. And next one is hard disk also. So hard disk is also too much wasted nowadays because 40 GB, 20 GB hard disk like before 10 years. People are not using nowadays because we have pen drive. But hard disk generally can spin it like 5000 to 1000 RPM. So we can use as a spin mode, spin quarter. So instead of going commercial spin quarter, we use our lab like the this spin quarter. The, the advantage of this one is doesn't require any vacuum suction. So we designed on our own way, so which can hold the sample without vacuum also. So it can goes up to 6000 RPM, it can able to stain, and it can able to coat it, the thin film. And here we can see normal dip coating, it shows like the output voltage, it was showing like a point, 1.6 millivolt. And here we can see the potential was is showing like 2.3 millivolt. So thin films happen like, as morning presentation, Professor was giving like phonon scattering effect, right? Similar concept, when we go with the thin film, the phonon scattering can reduce, so joule heat can be reduced. Based on that, we can able to effectively utilize the potential power can be generated from the surface. And uh, even since we are working on something like a flexible, we want to make it uh, flexible uh, generating testing also. So that also we make like our own setup like actuator. So we have like actuator, linear actuator. With the linear actuator, we can predict it the extension and elongation of the devices. We can see about how the durability of my device, like we will run it for the 5,000 cycles, 20,000 cycles and see about when the device is getting break. So that we can have to predict it on this. One is like a resistive method. Other, other one is camera based, like image count, DIP, digital image processing. So both we can take it, both the concepts we can compare and we can see how potential the device can able to have stability. And uh, finally, like uh, this is a recent work uh, last year we got from the DSC. Like we integrating thermodynamics, the solar panel to increase the lifetime. Generally, people go for the cooling application. So they go with the water cooling for to reduce the solar because solar get heated up. Not only UV, it near IR also it can integrate because since near IR heat can be generated. So the photon can be observed from the PV, but photon cannot uh, observe. Due to that effect, the panel get lifetime going down. So when we directly investigated with the Siemens games industry, so they have said like they need some solution for this. So for that we made integrating of the TEG, but we when we found of integrating, we found like it's not potentially the absorption is happening near IR. So we make one more layer like a photothermal conversion layer, which is like oxide based fabric, coated fabric, and over that it can absorb the heat and from bottom to top, bottom uh, like a uh, top to bottom, it can trap the heat and it give it to the TEG. Due to that we can give potential output, we can able to see here. So potential output we can see like initial 4.5 for single cell and when you go with the higher potential when we integrate it, 5.0. So it's like 0.5 for single cell it increase without giving any additional potential power, we can increase the uh, harvesting energy. And finally like, uh, so I'd like to thank you for our collaborating institutes also. So who are supporting us to make potential for our research work. And uh, thank you.
question? Uh, or uh, uh, flexolytic we use like a bismuth tolerate we used and uh, polymer silicon silicon composites huh. that, that's what the show ratio we have right we, we'll say like a show ratio value of polymide is a substrate we, we used but we didn't use for the filling material. So here we can see about the show ratio. Based on the show ratio value, whether you need soft, extra soft or medium soft, our, our work we need always like 60 to something. We need the show ratio, which is giving like a very flexible nature. Or sometimes we go with the thermolytic, we'll go with the 40 to 50 also. Depending on the application, we choose the show ratio. This show ratio, we can do it on based on the composite material of silicons. Bismuth tolerate as a like a thin film we tried and uh, we tried as a bulk material. So we synthesize, we make a pellet and then from that we make like a Y cut up, we'll make a legs like 1.4 cross 1.4. Ha, both. We synthesize and we'll make pellet like that. And in that also we tried with uh, like a current electrode, like nickel coating or without nickel coating. Either way we can do it. Uh, to reduce the air gap or to reduce the defects in the surface. When you cut right, wire cut off. That will be surfacing, the defects will be there. So to reduce that, we'll go with the coating also. Yes. Can you tell me actually we are testing. Because we, we don't have the uh, like a real field of testing kind of equipments, we go there and we'll do testing with them. Okay. For uh, like example, uh, stretchable testing and the cohesivity testing and resistivity and related with polymer. Because when they wore it as a jacket, they need to know comfortable of, even like absorption of air, air permeability also we need to test. So those type of applications we use there. You UTS yes, giving about huh. like homemade one or the commercial one? Commercial. I see it as one of the uh, potential use in uh, landing a retraction system where we can. This one is about. This one is a homemade setup. What we do is we take a normal linear actuator, like control zone system which we studied. So we generally apply the theory what we studied in theory course. We do it practically. So that linear actuator, so LVDT we use it. That LVDT will help to measure the resistance. So in the next graph. <coughs> Uh, any other questions? Any other questions? Like, meet them at the open. Uh, right now, we did on the lab scale. Right now, we are moving for field test. So, maybe by uh, April, we will start. Next month, we will start for the field test. Is it 0.5 volts per panel? Per, per cell. Per cell. Huh. Because they like uh, they spending huge on the water cooling. Because generally, what they do is they give the water cooling bottom to lifetime to increase the panel. We are going for harvesting energy. Again, giving wasting energy to cool that it's no use. So that's why we made it like a like a thermodynamic effect, which can integrate sandwich of that, which can harvest the energy instead of additional energy to require cooling. So it can trap the heat. It can give the potential energy. So we can hybridly we can get higher than that. <laughs> What's the voltage gradient per square, per square? Uh, per square, it's like almost 20 to 30 microwatt only we are getting. Power. 30 microwatt. Ha. Power per square is. Ha. Yes, sir. Hmm. Which you are putting, it is just harvesting, so it is not reducing the temperature. 
No, no, it, it, since it's harvest, initially we thought like that. Yes. We can put the DEG, it can harvest it, the temperature will go down, yeah. but it doesn't happen yeah. effectively. Yeah. That's why we made it like one more layer below the... Uh, when you are putting a TEG behind that below the cell, it will not reduce the temperature. I'll show you, sir. I'll finish this. I'll come back. So, sir, like here we can see linear actuator. Like, uh, we made measure is at the point of the resistance. Whenever we increase the time per time, so the resistance should be constant. So, we want to know about the device resistance whenever flexible stretch elongation or compression happen, number of cycles, how the resistance change. We went for almost like 1400 cycles, we went for this and each uh, minute it will go for like almost like uh, 7 to 8 cycles of bending and elongation. So like we went for 1400 seconds, we went for that and we did and little modification we are doing to upgrade of this. So this was recently we started 6 months back. I, I, I perceive it as a system like for example if we have a Landing gear retraction system. Every for every landing and take after every take off, we retract it. So uh, because uh, technician health monitoring of that system is very crucial for us because during landing and take off, the most crucial system is the landing gear itself. And ninety percent of the accidents happen during this day. So can we do uh, health monitoring using this system? Automatically in my cockpit, I have, I have a display how much is the resistance, and it is calibrated in terms of the health in percentage. So life cycle we can analyze with the help of this concept. But we need to understand the mechanism of that, then we can do modifying on this also. Thank you. Yes. So as you said, like we initially thought like that. When we put integrated of TEG, we can harvest the entire heat, so it will become cool, so we can make it okay potential power. But that was wrong actually. We, we tried out field trial, but we come to know that heat is not absorbed effectively. It's absorbing, but almost 40 to 50 percent. But remaining almost 60 percent stay in the lower of the solar panel, bottom of the panel. So for that integration, we made a photothermal conversion layer which is like a fabric, which is like a sticker or paint, we can make it. So below the panel, it can absorb the heat, it can dilute to the TNG. So that's what we made it on this uh, one and it can give potential. Like in the next slide, I can show you. Uh, for single cell, it is absorbed the entire temperature of almost like 8 to 9 degree to us absorbed. Huh. So normally it happened 10 degree. So that's why we are optimizing this also. Like normally solar panel, it have like, a, for example, top panel is 30 degree, bottom panel 40 to 42 degree, it will be. So we achieve right now 6, 7 to 8 degree we achieve right now. We still modify. Difference is very high. Huh. So one thing is what we made is like a fabric coating we did. Now we're moving on the paint concept. So when you go with the paint, it can trap the 100% of the heat. So now we are moving on that. And along with that, instead of going bulk method of uh, like uh, macro scale, as I said, 1.4 leg size, we are going at the thin flip for that also. When you go with the thin flip, we can potentially harvest that also. Now we are up upgrading of that, that system also. So right now it's giving five. I hope like right now the thin flip one, it will go better than this. Almost like 80% uh, of the solar single panel, it can harvest. Any other question? From this last two benches, any question? Get up. Please get up. Hmm. What do you understand out of it? What was the lecture about? The lecture was so yes, yes, just I want a comment. The lecture was so informative. I didn't know about the how jacket is work. So you can ask that is what question session is. Unless sitting ideal. And wasting your time is not the purpose of conference. You can ask those questions. Isn't it? What do you think? Yeah. She is asking, if she doesn't understand how that jacket works. Anything you want to say? Well, this was one of the uh, main causes. Uh, 
uh, that was required at some point of time so that it would be easy to maintain the temperature, body temperature, even if it is not viable at that at any point of time. But uh, since, as she said, it was no, not one of the most uh, uh, explored fields that we could get into. We were more, more into the educational and the theoretical parts, not the practical uh, uses of the, and the applications that, were, that could be used at that point of time. So we are still learning about, we are learning about the new things that we could use and can be a help in the future. This is what I expect. Then and then you will enjoy. Otherwise, you time wait for the cup to be finished. Isn't it? Most of the time we are thinking. We are forced to sit there. Is it? No. <laughs> something very funny. Enjoy the thing. Enjoy the lecture. Try to learn. Have you ever heard that flexo, thermal flexo effect? Ever? No. So that is a new word you have learned. New fact you are learning. Today evening, when you go home, try to search on the YouTube what you know of. Because this is a new word you are learning. So this is the purpose of the conference. Thank you very much, sir. Very good subject. Very nice. Subject. Thank you. So along with the chair of the session, uh, Professor R. Kikrana, sir. Uh, so Jaina was not here, uh, co-chair of the session. So we will move further uh, to have the uh, oral presentation presentations. There are two oral presentations which will be held online. The students are available. Okay. Yes, sir.
Hello. Yes, please. Please start. Sir. Please start. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, I am Monica Gandhi uh, from CNTC from SSPL DRDO. Uh, I am presenting the poster. Uh, the title is Synthesis and Characterization of Bismuth Telluride Alloy Based Nano Composites with Multi Walled CNT Nano Infusion. Uh, basically, we are working on bismuth telluride alloy based nano composites for thermoelectric cooling applications. Uh, bismuth telluride alloys are uh, best material around room temperature application, and we are preparing nano composites by top down approach. We are using wall milling method for uh, nano structuring of P type bismuth antimony telluride bulk alloys, and then we are adding multi walled CNT in varying concentration. Uh, these nano composites are then compacted by cold press and then annealed. And in uh, one point weight, uh, point one weight percent CNT based nano composites, uh, we have achieved reduction in uh, thermal conductivity and uh, increment in uh, Z figure of merit. These are the characterization results. Am I audible, sir? Yes, yes, you are audible. Yes, you are audible. Please go on. Yes. Uh, this is the work done, and uh, these are the thermal conductivity results, and uh, this is a figure of merit. We have achieved uh, overall uh, increment in uh, thermal uh, in figure of merit uh, comparison to bulk alloys. Hello. Yes, sir. Monica, are you uh, able to hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, uh, can you tell us like what is the new thing you did in your work, right? Uh, you um, you said you have chosen like bismuth, and then you are using multiple carbon nanotube, right? Uh, pardon, sir. So you are using bismuth telluride alloy, right? Yes, sir. So what is the new thing you did in your work? Uh, sir, we have prepared nano composite with multi wall CNT. Yeah, that is fine. But uh, why you have done it? Then? Uh, sir, we have uh, previously worked on, uh, on nano structured bismuth antimony telluride. Then we tried to add many nano inclusions like copper, silicon. Uh, graphene nano inclusions and CNTs, and yeah. in CNTs we have achieved uh, enhancement in ZT. Okay, so so what is the let's say application you are like uh, seeing from this material? Uh, so earlier we have worked on bulk alloys, and uh, we have uh, prepared um, single stage coolers for uh, uh, microbolometer applications. Okay, fine. Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay, Monica, do you may log out? Okay, Monica, thank you. Thank you, sir. My voice is audible to you? Yes, sir. Okay, please. You may start. Uh, you may start. Please share your screen and please start. Mm. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Please go on. Yes, sir. 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 Yes,
सर गुड आफ्टरनून सर माई पेपर टाइटल नेम इज गैस सेंसिंग प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ एनजीओ डो एस एन ओ टू थिक फिल्म गैस एलपीजी सेंसर द फंक्शन एंड मटेरियल वी सिलेक्टेड फंक्शन एंड मटेरियल एस एन ओ टू टीन ऑक्साइड एंड द डोपन मटेरियल मैग्नेशियम ऑक्साइड Uh, the synthesis of nano material we synthesize the uh, we synthesize the nano materials of sno2 and mgo by the uh, disk type ultrasonic gated microwave assisted centrifuge technique and uh, this is the actual photograph of a uh, microwave assisted uh, disk type ultrasonic gated microwave assisted centrifuge This technique is uh, available in our laboratory at a bulk and nano material uh, bulk and nano material research laboratory, Parola District, Jalwa. This is the static gas sensing setup. This is the gas. Uh, this is the static gas sensing setup. This is the block diagram of uh, static gas sensing setup, and we uh, the sense uh, we sense the uh, Thin or thick films on this uh, by the, uh, sense the uh, material by this technique. And, and here is the one heater, then uh, uh, heater, then uh, picoameter, uh, gas inject unit, and glass dome. Characterize the material uh, by FeCM and XRD, and uh, this is the peak. This is the XRD peak. Uh, this figure shows the X-ray diffraction of one weight percent of MgO dope SnO2 powder. The two theta peaks observed, and the XR, XRD spectrum reveal that the material is a polycrystalline in a nature and combination of tetragonal monoclinic in a structure uh, and the average crystalline size was absorbed to about uh, 38.7 nanometer and also from xrd analysis it is observed that uh, the powder of mgo dope sno2 is a slightly less amorphous and slightly more crystalline uh, this is the fcm Uh, photograph the this uh, this is the same image of one weight percent of thick film calcined at a 450 degree celsius for a 30 minute here the mgo here the mgo dope sno2 thick film consists of a voids and a wide range a wide range of randomly distributed grains with the size of uh, 400 nanometer and the appearance of uh, appearance of the film is a less porous and which can support the adsorption and desorption type of gas sensing mechanism and the nano scale uh, grains exhibit high uh, surface to a volume ratio and this is the uh, selective nature uh, selective nature of mgo dope sno2 <laughs> thick film of mgo dope sno2 Shows the sensitive nature to a oxygen at a, a selective nature to a LPG at uh, LPG, and it has a high selectivity against all the other uh, gases also such as uh, NH3, uh, CO2, H2, ethanol gas, etc. And this is the temperature performance, temperature dependence per, uh, performance. Uh, this graph shows the variation of temperature uh, variation of temperature uh, variation uh, variation of gas response of mgo sn2 thick film with the operating uh, with the operating temperature as the temperature is uh, as the temperature increases the uh, uh, the response also uh, increases 
uh, as the temperature increases, uh, increases, the LPG response also increases. Thank you, sir. Thank you. 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 Good afternoon, sir. All of you. Now, my screen, screen is show. Yes, yes. Welcome to my presentation. My uh, top uh, title name is Nanostructure MN, MN, 0 0.03 MN. The one ninety seven O five phase room temperature ammonia sensor. Myself, Mr. Farshal Adanoko. Okay. We have selected the two materials, MO3 as a functional material and MO MO2 as a doper. The nanocomposite of MO3 and MO2 were prepared by doping the MO3 powder with a nanostructure MO2 with one percent by the mechanical method. This is the XRD crop of our uh, uh, material of one word, one word of percent. This figure shows the diffractive gram, X-ray diffractive gram of one percent uh, MnO2 MnO3 powder. A two theta p observe the XRD spectrum reveals that the material is a polycrystalline in nature and combination of tetragonal monoclinic in a structure. The average crystallite size was observed to be the tape point, sorry, sorry, 26.3 nanometer. It was also observed heat from the XRD analysis. The powder is slightly less amorphous and highly crystalline. These are the figure of efficient. This is the same image of 1%, 1 meter percent MnO2 MO3 thick films fire at a 450 degree. Celsius for the 30 minutes. The ML nor nor 3 MO nor 97 O5 uh, O5 thick films are consist of the voice and wide range of randomly distributed grains with a size of 400 nanometer distributed as a smaller grain. The appearance of the film likes a porous which supports the absorption desorption type of gas tensing mechanism. These nanoscale cranes exhibit high surface to a volume pressure. <coughs> this is a EDAX, that is an elemental analysis. The filtered powder, MnO2MO3, is an excess in oxygen, which is decreased, is the young tightness character. Six, Excess or deficiency of constituents, material particles lead to a semiconducting nature of the material. This is a graph of temperature dependent performance, uh, gas response versus operating temperature. The graph shows the variation of ammonia gas at a 500 ppm gas response of 10 minute to films with the operating temperature at a room temperature of 32 degrees Celsius, which are very less and decreases with operating temperature. The 1 meter percent MnO2 MnO3 response to NS3 at the room temperature. These are the selective nature of ammonia gas with the other gases like LPG, CO2, H2, Cl2, ethanol or 
uh, and photo gases. The MnO2 MO3 films is most sensitive to the LS3 gas at a room temperature. It has a high selective against all the different gases like a CO2, LPG, Cl2, ethanol, O2, H2 gases like this. Now we have conclusion that now first conclusion is here, there is Mn part uh, 3, non part 3, Mo non 97 thick films were uh, sensitive to ammonia at room temperature. Second one, the excellent features of the sensor are highly sensitive, selective, low cost, portable in the size, and wait long term stability, quick response, and fast decode. Thank you so much, sir. Hello. Yes. Hazal, are you able to hear me? Hello. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, so you, you have taken MOO3, uh, then MNO2, right? So what is the motivation yes. of uh, taking these two materials for your study? Sorry, sir. Why you have taken like these two materials for your studies? Sir, because it is a, a, a room temperature sensor for the ammonia. So you don't have any other material that can do the yes, same sir. job or? Do you have any yes, other materials also or this is very unique? Yes, sir. What do you mean by yes, sir? <laughs> Sound me. What, what I am saying is why you have taken these two materials? Is there is any motivation behind, you know, uh, choosing these two materials for your studies for ammonia, uh, let's say, uh, detection? Na? Yes, yes, sir. So, from the, I will select it from this, from the literature service, sir. Okay, fine. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, until now you can let me. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, so now we'll start the poster session, right? So the first uh, speaker is Subraha Sorab Jana. So he is going to talk about water heat recovery using oxide. Oh, sorry. Okay, sorry. Waste heat recovery using oxide based nano composite uh, for high temperature thermoelectric power generator. Five minutes. 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 Five Uh, thank you all the organizers for giving me this opportunity to deliver my talk on oxide nanocomposites for high temperature thermometric generator generation. And myself, Subra Sourav Jada, I am working with Professor Tanmay Maithi uh, in IIT Kanpur. So, okay, I will rush So, uh, all of us know that uh, for preceding talks, that what is uh, Seebeck effect, the uh, temperature difference will generate a potential difference, and uh, the performance of a thermoelectric material is given by this JT parameter, which is a uh, composed of this uh, Seebeck coefficient, electrical conductivity, and thermal conductivity K. So always we want to increase this uh, JT parameter. So for that we need to uh, increase the Seebeck, we need to increase the sigma, but we need to decrease the K. 
and uh, this is a diagram I have just shown the variation of all those parameters with the electron concentrations and uh, we show that uh, how the if we want to improve one parameter others will be compromised so always we want to have this sweet spot where the JFT performance is maximum and all of us know about the uh, uh, um, current scenario of uh, energy consumption and uh, here actually I just wanted to show that two-third of energy is wasted in the form of heat energy in any industries and automobile sector and thermoelectric material is such a material which can tap that energy and convert it into useful electricity. And thermoelectric materials are already in use for decades in RTG devices and uh, these are like some prototypes which are being used now but not widely used in day-to-day uh, -day life and uh, thermoelectric materials are like chalcogenides, bismuth tellurides, so these are chalcogenides, half useless, catrodides, but these materials are um, very toxic and composed of some ex expensive uh, 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 elements and they are not at all stable at higher temperatures. So my focus is basically oxide uh, materials like strontium titanate which is consisting of perovskite structure Strontium titanate is a very good material because it consists of high CBF coefficient but the problem with strontium titanate is it has a very low CBF uh, electrical conductivity. So people do doping at A site or B site to improve its electrical conductivity. So, uh, but still that cannot match the state of the chalcogenate. So my work is basically form a com to forming a composite with the CNT uh, uh, because that will actually improve, uh, that will generate a new surface interfaces which will lead to the phonon scattering at the same time that will improve the electrical conductivity. In a way, we ha have been able to uh, decouple the electrical and thermal transport which in turn results in improved JT. So here, the processing uh, of my material where solid state process is used and simply spark plasma sintering is used for consolidation of powder into pellet. This is based on my recent publication in carbon. So here I have got a single phase perovskite structure, cubic structure. I have detected the CNT by different uh, like uh, FeACM and uh, Raman spectroscopy TEM. The interesting part is when we add the CNT, the CVEC remains almost flat. So CVEC is not changing and that is, uh, it's more surprising when you see the electrical conductivity. The electrical conductivity, there is a thousand percent increase in the electrical conductivity, but CVEC remains flat. And that is advantage to us, obviously. And uh, further to dig deeper, we went for hall measurement. We see the almost no change in the electrical concentration. Uh, and that actually corroborates well with the almost unaffected CV coefficient, but what about electrical con conductivity? So before that, I will uh, say that this uh, electron concentration is even uh, satisfying the MOT criteria for semiconductor to metal transition, but still our material is showing semiconductor behavior at the low temperature region. So that's confusing to us. Okay, so we went for weighted mobility calculations. We show that uh, actually weighted, uh, this mobility is the main contributor for improved enhanced electrical conductivity. So we have shown, uh, 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 we have developed a model which is Anderson localizations of electrons. I have shown it by the cartoon that uh, when some people are coming into the group of people and they are making their friendship broken uh, and each of them acting as an individual entity. The similar thing happening in our system where we incorporate some defects into the structures and uh, by doping and processing. So which actually localize the electrons in the systems. So that is the reason for suppressed mobility for pure STN. And when the CNT is coming, the mobility is boosted. Uh, I'm skipping this. Yeah, so this same idea I have also used for graphite composite in STN system again. So there we have got a, a high JFT performance around 0.7, so which is quite promising for oxide thermoelectrics. I made a device out of it, uh, so which is a four lake unilake configuration. And here I have got a remarkable power output uh, at around 2.52 milliwatt. Uh, they look very small, but uh, for in the context of thermoelectric device, it's quite high for oxide thermoelectrics. So I have shown here a design strategy to uh, uh, develop a high performance oxide thermoelectric material. And this is my group. Uh, thank you for your presence. Yeah, any questions from the audience? CNT is basically, uh, uh, we know that uh, 
quasi ballistic electron motion that that in, uh, promotes the uh, electron for for high mobility okay in the system so basically that improves the mobility in the system but the electron concentration remains almost unaffected because the cnt concentration is very low in the system so basically it is acting as a mobility enhancer so when you uh, you when you have taken the cnt you taken by knowing that if i'll add cnt yes. then i am going to expect those yes things. yes okay. yes okay fine okay fine thank you So we have uh, next speaker is uh, Muskan Jindal. So she is going to talk about study of annealing effect on structural, morphological, and optical properties of pure SnO2 thin film. So you have five to six minutes, okay, for your talk. Good afternoon to everyone. Myself, Muskan I am doing MSc from IAS deemed to be university. Uh, I am going to talk about these topics. Uh, first one is introduction. Metal oxide plays very important role in many areas like physics, chemistry, material science and etc. Uh, tin oxide is also known as uh, stannic oxide is the inorganic compound. It is colorless dimagnetic and amphoteric uh, solid. Uh, tin oxide has widely applications like uh, it is used in solar cell, uh, thin fins, uh, gas transistors and catalysis, electrocatalysis and solar, solar energy conversion. Uh, significance of this study and the outcome. We will do modification in the different properties of tin oxide for enhancement in the efficiency uh, is different applications such as gas sensor, solar cells, thin film, transistor, coating and optoelectronic devices. Uh, now experimental detail, uh, vacuum thermal evaporation, it is also known as uh, vacuum evaporation. In this process, uh, firstly, uh, 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 we put our material Material in this uh, sample holder, then if the heat is given, uh, source material uh, source uh, material is vaporized and evaporate uh, towards and evaporates uh, towards the glass substrate glass substrate and it is deposited in the form of thin film. And our vacuum uh, level is obtained minus five into ten to power uh, minus five millibar and th our uh, thickness is one hundred and ten nanometer. Uh, various characterization. First one is surface morphological characterization. It is done by Fe Sam. Uh, uh, first image is surface morphology of as deposit as deposit tin oxide thin film. Second one is after annealed our sample at 400 degrees Celsius for two hours. After annealing, particle size uh, uh, particle size became increases and surface is homogeneous and is smooth. Uh, first image is. Uh, our particles at scale 1 micrometer and second image uh, scale at 2 micrometer. And electrical characterization, it is done by 4 pro method. Uh, uh, by the 4 pro method, we calculated the resistivity and conductivity of our tin oxide. Uh, it is the IV curve of our tin oxide. First one is as deposit, as deposit tin oxide. Second one is annealed tin oxide at 400 degrees Celsius. With the help of this curve, we calculated resistivity and conductivity. Resistivity of S deposit uh, SNO2 is uh, 112.5 nano ohm meter and conductivity is 0.0089 nano maho meter inverse. And after annealing at 400 degrees Celsius of our sample, resistivity is uh, 90 nano ohm meter and conductivity is 0.01 nano maho meter inverse. Now, conclusion. Uh, the sample was annealed at temperature 400 degrees Celsius for two hours. A resistivity decreases with annealing temperature up to 400 degrees Celsius and the variation of conductivity and temperature suggests the semiconducting nature of the thin film. Uh, due to annealing uh, particles, 
became smooth and regular sized spherical shape in surface morphology and the as prepared thin film without any particle size is small in comparison of thin film which is annealed at 400 degrees celsius for 2 hours uh, these are references thank you उनके जो रिजल्ट है वो और भी अच्छी तरीके से अगर हम हमने लास्ट ईयर के रिसर्च पेपर पढ़े थे अगर टेन ऑक्साइड को अपन फोर हंड्रेड फोर हंड्रेड से एव एनियल्ड कराते हैं तो वो मैच हो जाता है इसलिए फोर हंड्रेड so next uh, next is uh, jaya rising nani so the presentation is study of effects of annealing on structural optical and electrical properties of zinc tin oxide thin films yes. so you know the time right huh? yeah. <coughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for providing me with this opportunity. I'm Jaya Rai Singh Hani from IIS Deen Tov University. I'm pursuing my masters currently. So uh, this study is basically based uh, based on the uh, zinc tin composite zinc tin oxide thin films. I've studied the structural morph uh, structural optical and electrical properties. So uh, nanotechnology basically uh, deals with the Uh, devices and materials uh, with this, which have the particles in the size range below hundred nanometers. These are called nanoparticles, as we all know it. Metallic nanoparticles are important because uh, when we go, uh, when we go to that smaller size, the physical and chemical properties are changed as compared to the bulk metals. And oxides also have distinctive uh, physical and 
chemical properties due to their limited size. So, uh, when we talk about metal oxides, zinc oxide is comparatively considered to be of higher quality because of its excellent semiconducting characteristics. It is doped with a lot of uh, 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 various elements like, say, aluminium or iron, tin, copper, etc. We are taking uh, tin because it brings brings about higher carrier concentration and electrical conductivity in its amorphous state. So uh, we can imagine how well it would be when we anneal it. Zinc oxide and tin oxide, when we uh, combine them, they are of exceptional scientific interest actually due to its uh, distinctive synergistic effects. A variety of techniques can be used to synthesize the uh, thin films like sol gel method, chemical vapor deposition. For uh, uh, our project, we have used physical vapor deposition, which basically uh, works on the principle of changing from the condensed phase to the vapor phase and then back to the condensed phase when it deposits on the substrate. Uh, zinc tin oxide ceramics have been extensively investigated. Like I said, it's of exceptional scientific interest. That's because it has it is a spinal structure compound, and uh, mostly it's used in combustion gas and moisture sensors. It has a great advantage over other multi-component oxides because uh, it does it avoids the use of critical raw materials. Now, uh, when we talk about uh, preparing the sample, uh, I first prepared the sample by taking uh, zinc oxide and tin oxide and mixing them uh, using a mortar and pestle for five hours. Uh, it was taken in the ratio 60 is to uh, 60 to 40. Uh, then the uh, when the mixture was prepared, the powder was deposit fed into a molybdenum board and it was deposited using a high vacuum coating unit. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah using thermal vacuum evaporation. It was done in the vacuum of uh, 10 to the power minus 5 m bar. And then uh, the sample prepared was annealed for two hours at 500 degrees. The films were then characterized. Uh, first, we talk about the XRD results. We can see here uh, the as deposited and the annealed films. Uh, the, uh, the variation can be clearly seen in the peaks. I've depicted which peaks are of uh, which sample. We can see zinc oxide, tin oxide, and ZTO clearly. I've uh, mentioned the JCPDS files over here, uh, which we've used to uh, recognize the peaks. We have also calculated the grain size using debye scherer formula, which we can see has increased from 7.37 to 8.02 nanometers. Next, we talk about uh, UVs NIR results. When we see the annealed and as deposited, we use talk method to uh, identify the band gap, which we can see has significantly decreased. These are the uh, transmittance graphs. The transmittance is above 85% for both, but the films, uh, the annealed films show defined transmittance as compared to the as deposited. This is the four probe analysis, which uh, we used to uh, calculate the sheet resistance of the material. This is, uh, we can see both of the both of them uh, follow Ohm's law, but the resistance is decreased for the annealed films, and uh, which uh, clearly increases the conductivity, which we have calculated over here, as the values are mentioned. So concluding the study, I would like to say that uh, the crystalline, crystallinity of the uh, sample was increased after annealing. The grain size also uh, was calculated, which, which was shown to be increased. Optical gap band gap was calculated, which was significantly decreased. And the resistivity of films was also decreased due to increase in mobility and carrier concentration after annealing. Thank you. XRD, uh, <laughs> sir, we uh, use the characterizations from MNIT. Any question from the audience? Yeah, you talked about uh, nanoparticles, right? Yes. So why is they very different than their bulk uh, material? Suppose you, you have zinc oxide, let's say nanoparticles. Yeah. If I go for the bulk one, right? Yeah. So why nanoparticles are very different? Sir, uh, Due to the limited size, when we decrease the size, the uh, properties of the materials change. 
Why? That's a question. Why? The physics, what is the physics behind it? Uh, because, people, yeah. People are talking nano, nanotechnology, very fundamental questions. Yeah. yeah. I'm actually not able to. Uh, That's okay. That's yeah, okay. No problem. Surface area. And, Is anything to do with the surface area? It, uh, yeah, the, uh, I don't know how to put this actually. Uh, the size decreases and uh, the par particles that we have chosen particularly here, uh, they also uh, show variable valency. Uh, so uh, that affects the uh, size. Yeah. Mm. And one more question. So you have like uh, as deposited sample, then you have annealing sample. Yes, so why do you see it so different in annealing? So what it does when you do you know, annealing to your films or material? So, uh, because you have shown, right? The comparison. Yes. Yeah. So why? So, uh, Firstly, when we talk, when we check the structural properties, we see that uh, it increases the crystallinity. In, initially, the films were amorphous in nature, so uh, the films became crystalline when we uh, anneal them, and uh, the carrier concentration, the mobility of electrons, is increased. Carrier concentration is increased. Okay, thank you. This changes the process. A very basic question. Yeah. Very basic question. Uh, I wanted to ask. It was a direct job actually because five hours is a very long period of yeah, time. Yeah, I, I did that in uh, five yeah. different segments. Like okay. I did that one hour per day. One hour per day? Yes. So one hour each day. So, in interval. So, you yeah. took it to, I divided it in five days. Yes. So it is a tiring job for one day. Of course. That, is, that, is a, that, that actually got my attention because it was a very tiring job. Very, job. very, very tiring job. Very No doubt. Five hours. I divided it in five days. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So now we have Pankaj Srivastav. So he is going to talk about Anas Kamusas leaves extract as agent in synthesis of zinc 1 minus X NIX of O. Then X is like you are having X, right? 0, 0 0.07 NPX and XRD, UV visible and AHAM, same EDX studies. I got, okay, fine. So you have five to six minutes, okay, for your presentation. Very good afternoon, all of you. First of all, I would like to thank convener of WCT and their teams. My topic is ananas, homosis leaves extract as an agent in a synthesis of dope zinc oxide in the ratio of 0 0.07 and XRD UV visible some EDX study. So, doping is a neotric approach to altering nano nanoparticles, physical, chemical, optical, and electrical properties uh, implement in solar cell and biomedical application. In this work, we have used uh, a capping agent uh, or a capping agent in, as a plant extract for fabrication of nanoparticles. Uh, the transition metal dope, second, fourth group semiconductor exhibit unique and promising optical, electrical, <coughs> and magnetic characteristics. Bioplant extract 
is a used as a highly potential substitute of the stabilizing and size reducing capping agent due to the presence of bio organic compound that, that is a <coughs> terpenoids alkaloids amino acids yes. there are many reports are available in literature alkaloids flavonoids and ketones and so on bio, biochemicals are major constituent exist in a bio plants the existence of west group in a fluorides and phenols are the involved in the size reduction stabilization of metal and metal oxide nanoparticles basically in the ananas commercial plant which is name is a general name is a pineapple leaves have the potential to be used for the synthesis could be used as a size control agent in the synthesis sample due to the existence of flavonoids and phenols in this in this work we have reported green synthesis of zinc oxide and nickel doped zinc oxide using an ananas cuspicus leaves and then uh, then the synthesized sample characterized by xrd cell edx and uv visible spectroscopy this is a synthesis mechanism how prepare how fabricate and nanoparticles dot and undot this is a, in this work uh, just like we have seen that this is a flow chart of synthesis mechanism uh, 20 ml of 0.1 mole zinc acetate and 20 mole of 0.1 mole nickel nitrate dissolved in, in the solution of ethanol and continuous stirring magnetic stirring and uh, then after one hours adding nos solutions and 20 ml of leaf extract in the solution and then last we get a brown precipitate after calcination we form a red brown sample nickel zinc oxide the synthesized sample characterized by various characterization tools like a uv visible spectroscopy xrd and sem edx in this first characterization techniques is a uv visible spectroscopy since jdno sepal is a semiconductor materials so we have seen that by uv visible spectroscopy the pure jdno sample doped by an optical band gap is a 3.368 electron volt and after doped with a nickel we get 3.37 electron volt then we have done xrd techniques we have seen we have seen clearly both samples are identical shown back peaks except uh, 201 plane shows nickel concentration doping effect little bit and we uh, by xrd spectroscopy we have seen that the structure is a hexagonal structure and maximum brax peaks obtained 101 and the particle size of prepared sample is 4.43.77 nanometer for a doped materials and undoped is a 46.34 nanometers this is a surface morphological study we have seen that the average uh, particle range of is uh, 29 to 70 nanometer range and mostly shape is a most mostly shape is a spherical shape some seen that triangular shape rhombus shape but but mostly narrow particle shape is a spherical shape and compositional analysis by edx no one minute eh? one minute yes okay. is a conclusion actually this work is done by my research student msc student uh, and so i am here to present on behalf of that student this is a msc project this year student thank you very much any question somebody what do you mean by green synthesis 
basically a synthesis mechanism in synthesis when a when a fabricated nano particles uh, continuously uh, after uh, fabrication of nano particles particle size continuously grow up. and the nature is a uh, agglomerations which be, which we change a part prop, change properties so we use a capping agent capping agent size reducing agent either chemical method either physical method as a bio method bio method is also known as green methods green synthesis so what is a bio method bio method is a plant extract method uh, basically in See, this what exactly you have done actually uh, we have done uh, dope and undoped sample See, uh, what is the doping sample doping sample is a liquid for green synthesis green synthesis is a capping agent So when a nano particle fabricate, size it continuously grow up and going to nano to micro region. Mm -hmm. So we prevent uh, micro region. We use a capping, size reducing agent. That is what what material you are using for capping. Oh, uh, uh, ananas come basically pineapple leaves. Hmm? Pineapple leaves. Pineapple leaves plant. They work as a capping agent. Plant itself. Plant is a powder form. Many object plant extract. Many object you know. I would really want to know what exactly you are doing. Actually, uh, my student done. Okay, thank you. Okay, I have one question. Mm -hmm. So uh, you talked about that EV visual spectroscopy, right? So you have seen it's okay. So you have seen a huge jump in the band gap, right? When you have the doped sample. So why it's so? Not so more, not much more uh, jump. Little slightly change. But it was like for uh, zinc oxide, it was point one point something. Since you say zinc said. oxide is a highly uh, known the wide band gap semiconductor. Mm -hmm. We have checked what is the effect after doping in the case of uh, uh, band gap surface morphological. We have studied what is the change after doping. Okay. Just a study. Just as a study. Okay. Next speaker is Siva Sankar. Sankar. Okay, okay. Okay, so you are going to talk about the effect of multi-wall carbon nanotubes on thermoelectric properties of copper selenide in enhancing power fracture, right? Okay, go ahead. So very good afternoon, everyone. I hope you are enjoying the session. Yes, very good afternoon, sir. Uh, today I am going to present my work. Effect of multi-wall carbon nanotubes on thermal trip properties of copper selenide uh, in enhancing the power factor. I am Jyushankar Rapaka from CSR. I am MT working under the guidance of Dr. Sarmishta Anwar uh, in Advanced Material Technology Department. This slide, I will talk about this slide later on because my time is limited. So we all know that uh, we do have lot of uh, energy sources, renewable and non-renewable and we are looking forward to uh, sustainable and environmental friendly energy resources as we all know and in that waste heat is one of the energy which we want to utilize see we want to utilize one we want to convert one form of energy to another form like that waste heat we can convert to electricity by using thermoelectric materials and these thermoelectric materials will convert waste heat to electricity by with the help of the temperature difference created in the material and this temperature difference which was created can be uh, utilized to generate electricity. Then uh, we can achieve this uh, uh, electricity by with the help of a module. Uh, you can see the module here. Uh, it is combination of P and N uh, series connected uh, with the help of uh, P and N type materials and with the help of this material, with the help of this module, 
we can put that at hot side where there is temperature uh, available and that temperature difference we can convert to electricity and the performance of the thermoelectric material is given by jet t uh, jet t is given by sigma x square t by k where sigma is electrical conductivity how much electric current it can transfer in a material and c back coefficient how much voltage difference it can means change in voltage with respect to change in temperature and thermal conductivity anyhow you know how much it it can conduct in a material so our basic aim what the researchers are trying to do is we just want to improve the jet t by tuning this b uh, by tuning all the three properties by using various strategies uh, as you all know like uh, we have to get high jet t in order to get high jet t um, uh, there are there are lot of materials already people are trying in that uh, we choose copper selenide as our uh, material system basically what we researchers are doing is we are taking one system material system and we are trying to improve that uh, performance of the system by using various strategies like doping high entropy alloying nano structuring and all so why i took copper selenide as my material uh, copper selenide is a very good excellent uh, thermoelectric material with with very good electrical properties and also it is a phase transition material it transforms from alpha monoclinic to beta monoclinic at uh, particular temperature 400 kelvin and it is it also behaves as a super ionic conductor uh, it behave, means like in copper selenide copper ions like behaves as a liquid so that uh, the thermal conductivity of this uh, copper selenide is very low then among all the strategies nano composite is one of the uh, well known strategy and well used strategy to improve the thermoelectric properties like electrical conductivity we can improve we can improve mechanical strength and also we can improve we can also make the compound what we prepared thermally and mechanically stable uh, it can also create phonon phonon scatterings so that the thermal conductivity can further reduce so in that uh, we took copper selenide system then we are trying to incorporate multiwell carbon nanotubes into the copper selenide system uh, to understand to make it understand it better i will give you a live example uh, i feel you all uh, love to eat biryani right what is the main ingredient in biryani uh, why biryani get its taste because of the masala right so uh, masala is one of the ingredient even though masala you add it will get tasty no if you add some salt uh, means like multiwell cnt are like supposed to be salt it's like even though masala is there in the biryani if you add some salt it will enhance the taste it will become yummy so uh, this is a simple two step process what we have done we synthesized the copper selenide uh, material with the help of uh, reduction method in in reduction method we uh, we took all the precursors for copper source and selenium source uh, we uh, with the help of mechanical stirrer we we did the reaction we got the chemical uh, copper selenide then uh, we did filtration to get the compound copper selenide powder then we have, we incorporated multiwell carbon nanotubes into the copper selenide by using mod simple mechanical grinding motor and twister yes sorry sir uh, i'll talk about the results uh, see we added multiwell carbon nanotubes how we'll get to know that we uh, multiwell carbon nanotubes are in incorporated into the copper selenide so it should get homogeneously distributed right with the help of the characterization techniques we'll Uh, confirm that multiwell carbon nanotubes are in, uh, incorporated with xrd uh, we uh, we confirm that uh, multiwell carbon nanotubes are incorporated by the peak shift which is available and uh, with the help of raman spectra we can get uh, d and g bands the d and g bands in the range 1300 to uh, 1700 will confirm the presence of multiwell carbon nanotubes and also from the fesm micrographs the surface morphology here we can see the multiwell carbon nanotubes like uh, the tube like structures we can see uh, warm like structures and with respect to hrtm also we can confirm that multiwell carbon nanotubes uh, are creating some interface with cutc which resulted in improving the properties now talking about the properties see we we added multiwell carbon nanotubes in different uh, weight percentages 0.51 1.5 and 2 
what we observed is at one particular uh, weight percentage that is one percent, our ventricular conductivity and CVAC coefficient is improving. Uh, combination of CVAC coefficient and electrical conductivity will give us the power factor, x squared sigma. So in, here we can see the blue blue one, where uh, this is one percent one. In one percent multiple sir yes sir over sir. Uh, then like when compared to bare sample, in 1% multi-well carbon nanotube radiation, uh, our power factor is improving. It's almost double when compared to bare sample. That's it. So I would like to acknowledge uh, our director, sir, and my guide, Sarmishta Anwar, and also uh, CSR for funding, ACSR, and also uh, my fellow lab mates. Thank you. Yes, sir. How long you are doing? Three years. Yes, sir. Three years. So this final test? Yes. So I am working with bulk and thin films. Hmm? Both. You are working? With bulk and thin films. My system is copper cellular system. Hmm. I am trying to improve the performance of the copper cellular system by various techniques. Can you tell me yes, any industry is looking after looking for your research? Sir, actually we are in research firm, sir. In order to Get into hey, industry. Purpose. We have to make a module, sir. Hmm. For making module, we need P and N type materials. Hmm. We are still in research only. We are trying to make the material. And our ultimate goal is to make a module. We'll make a module and we'll check the performance of the module as uh, already discussed. People are telling that efficiency of the module. First, we have to concentrate on the jetty. We, we have to improve the jetty. When it comes as a whole, like for a single material, it is jetty. If you speak about module, it is a Efficiency. And what, Anything. Yes, why multi carbon nanotubes? Why you not? Is it like trial and error? No. Sir. No. And what is it? Uh, people already tried in different system multi-well carbon nanotubes. Like we tried different carbon sources. In that, why multi-well carbon nanotubes? Because multi-well carbon nanotubes are having uh, weak van der Waals forces. Like it is either separate. So, if I talk about single one nanotube, yes. So, how would be the difference in your eyes? That's what. Sir. Uh, multiple nanotubes are having weak fundamental forces. That means if we are grinding, whatever material we are using, means we are mixing it, no sir. We should see that whatever mixing we are doing, like copper cellulite is my main material, it is more. Like in biryani, we, we are having this much biryani, but we are adding this much salt. And we see that that salt will get mixed into the biryani and it will get finished. Same way, same way, uh, we are adding this much multiple carbon nanotubes into this much copper cellulite and we should see that it, it should get distributed and major problem is the agglomeration when we are mixing uh, if, if if it's not get distributed homogeneously it will agglomerate okay fine thank yes. you uh, I by a, grinding I yes. that, uh, what you are using for uh, distributions of CNT I mean how you are mixing it water based it only water rigorous grinding why I am uh, why I am asking because CNT is prone to agglomeration yes that's so what I'm trying to say. Uh, even in water pressure, it is very difficult. Uh, you need milling kind of... Milling, thing. ultrasonication we can do. Yeah. We did ultrasonication also. We did ultrasonication. I have not mentioned. Okay. Um, okay. Fine. Thank yes. Design and fabrication of sp 2 sp for the offshore thermo, uh, thermoelectric application. Please go ahead. Good evening to everyone present here. Uh, I am Nandini from uh, KPR IIT, Coimbatore. So, uh, my professors are Dr. Shankar sir and Pandirasan Velusami sir. Uh, my topic is on design and fabrication of SB2 S3 for optothermoelectric applications. So, uh, I will have an overview like uh, uh, what is the thermoelectric and uh, what are the properties of my material. So, uh, on what basis I have chosen my material and synthesis and ink preparation. 
and uh, on different substrates we have printed uh, so that we'll be discussing on and uh, some characterization results also so uh, first going to the introduction uh, nowadays we are facing uh, many issues like uh, global warming and uh, uh, usage of fossil fuels so everyone is focusing on clean energy and sustainable kind of uh, work so uh, for energy harvesting we have uh, a major sources like mechanical thermal and solar so uh, in our lab what we are focusing is on thermal electric so thermal electric is nothing but the conversion of heat into electricity so its basic principle is seebeck effect so uh, coming to the seebeck effect uh, we will be having uh, two different metals like a and b as i have shown there so uh, we have uh, two different temperature like hot and heat, uh, cold so with the temperature difference between hot and cold that is the ambient temperature and the uh, body heat will have a, a, a dif uh, different temperature so that will be a, a creation of change in temperature so that uh, because of that uh, uh, voltage will be generated so that is called the seebeck effect and opposite of it is the peltier so why i am discussing is that uh, for opto uh, opto thermal electric applications uh, we have to consider uh, like opto means light and thermo means heat so by combination of both the uh, light and the heat uh, we are going to uh, design the SB to S3 according to that uh, application. So this uh, photo photovoltaic uh, effect, uh, we are going to apply the light and uh, also the heat. So uh, different uh, by having that as a source, uh, there be uh, there will be a generation of voltage. So that is called the uh, optothermal electric. And uh, coming to the SB S3, uh, it it has a, a single stable phase. And it has 1D crystal structure also. So it is an orthoromic crystal. And it uh, belongs to the chalcogenide group. And uh, it has a band gap of 1.1 to 1.7 electron volt. And uh, the Seebeck is also uh, a great uh, is, is also playing a great role over here. And it has a 200 to 250 microvolt per Kelvin at room temperature. So uh, we have selected SB to S3 since uh, from the literature. Uh, why? Because uh, many research has been carried out on physical uh, synthesis of this and uh, very few research has been carried over by chemical process and uh, so that uh, we have selected SB to S3 and there is much more to explore on chalcogenic groups also so we have selected on it. So what we have done is we have taken uh, antimony trichloride and sodium thiosulfate pentahydrate as a major precursor and uh, with, uh, we have as added acetone also. So uh, while having a magnetic stirrer and stirring over like 4 hours, uh, we will be having a, a final uh, precipitate solution. So after uh, forming a, the, that as a precipitate, that precipitate is taken over and dried for uh, some hours, uh, like uh, 2 hours for 60 degrees Celsius. And after that, what we are doing is, uh, uh, we have uh, made as a powder. So that powder we will be using as a, uh, for that ink preparation. So this is the uh, uh, orange color precipitate we have form, formed and after drying uh, this, uh, the, pro, uh, the powder will be in a black color form. So that uh, powder is taken and for the ink preparation what we have used is PVA with water. So uh, we will be mixing it for several hours like 4 hours uh, to have a proper dispersion over there. And uh, uh, we will be adding our SB to S3 prepared powder into that uh, PVA solution and uh, we will be having a final product of uh, SB to S3 ink. So what we will do is we will be printing that ink with the Nordsen EFD that is Nordsen Engineer Fluid Dispenser uh, where, we'll, uh, where we'll be, uh, we will be getting some flexible kind of thin films over there. So uh, we have tried with different substrates like uh, cellophane tape, butter sheet and so on. Uh, so uh, we have tried with polyamide, butter sheet, glass slide and so on. So from this uh, we got a good uh, flexibility over for uh, like polyamide sheet and uh, this is the XRD pattern we have formed and uh, there is a single phase of SB to S3 which is match matching with the JCP ratio of 421393 and it is an orthoromic structure as I have discussed uh, before and it has a crystalline nature too and in the semi majors we have confirmed that it has a cubical shape and some agglomeration is there we have to look into that and uh, the particle size is 6 to 14 nanometer. And from the EDAX, we have confirmed that uh, the composition is well far and good uh, with uh, sulfur as 54% and uh, SB as 45%. And um, we have confirmed that there is no other phase uh, in this. 
and from Hall measurement we have found that whether it is p type or n type. So according to the uh, parameters listed here like mobility, sheet resistance, resistivity, uh, we have uh, found that the material is p type. So uh, we have taken this p type material and uh, we have uh, found the IV characterization also. So it shows ohmic resistance like it uh, behaves like ohms law like V is equal to IR. So when current increases voltage also increases that is the ohmic resistance and uh, uh, from UV we have found that uh, the peak is formed at 410 nanometer and the conductivity mm -hmm. yeah, sir. Yes. Uh, for the conductivity test uh, it shows uh, very good conductivity and this is the device we have found uh, formed and uh, we have a uh, two pi type device like for P I'll be using what I have synthesized the SP to S3 as an ink form with printer pattern. And the N-type I have used bismuth telluride since uh, bismuth telluride is a well-known material. So we have taken that for comparison and uh, this uh, with P and N-type we have formed as a device and we have generated voltage of uh, uh, six, uh, 600 microvolt. And for conclusion, uh, so we have uh, done with the co-precipitation method and uh, these are the results we have found. And the novelty is like printing method is also a novel and uh, the synthesis part is also a novel part. So we are trying for the flexible th uh, thermoelectric device. Uh, so uh, it, actually this opto thermoelectric application is a, a very major focus because uh, very few researchers are working on it. So we uh, like to explore on it much more. Thank you so much. These are the references. Any question? We talked about ink application. Yes. So how it is different than the existing ink, right? Ink or printing application. So a uh, major focus is going on bulk and somewhat like uh, for thin film, majorly they are focusing on sputtering or PVD, CVD. So if we are going for the flexible part, uh, Majorly this ink will be a helpful one if you are wearing as a watch or a wearable kind of thing. We are uh, uh, focusing on the wearable part. So uh, this uh, ink form will be a better one. So we are focusing on that. It will, will compare you to existing printing or existing layer ink. Mm -hmm. So how it is uh, different? Uh, we have different printing like screen printing, roll to roll and all. So uh, for 3D kind of patterns, this knots and uh, EFD will be having for 3D dimensions. X, Y, Z we can print over. So for that application, we can do. Thank you so much. We have the next speaker, Anshu. So you are going to talk about hybrid autothermal power generation using fabric based photon uh, capture. Please go. Good afternoon everyone, I am Anshu Panbude from Triple IDDM Kanchipuram, Chennai under the supervision of Dr. Pandurus and Swami. Today I am going to present my talk on hybrid photothermal power generation using fabric based photon capture. Now, before going into the details of the work done, I will be focusing on why we have started for the work 
how we have done it, what we have got, and where currently we are standing. So, uh, going into the first introduction part, uh, everyone has talked about the renewable sources of energy, the triple R, reduce, reuse, recycle, and then the advantages why we are going for uh, thermoelectric based devices because of the uh, 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 direct conversion of the electricity from the waste heat and uh, why exactly we are going for the flexible variable applications. Currently in the market commercial available thermoelectric generators they are highly rigid. We cannot wear it on our body parts. If we wear it However, it will be doing some performance, but it will not be effective because the air gas, whatever is present, the non-uniform surfaces of our human body, that rigid modules cannot occupy it properly. There will be air gas present. Those kind of air gas that will lead to thermal losses. And those thermal losses will degrade the performance, degrade the efficiency of the whole thermoelectric generators. That is why we are going for the flexible applications, flexible uh, thermoelectric generators. As you see in this figure number two, this uh, first one is the rigid uh, TV and the second one is the curved surface uh, uh, of the human body and this flexible thermoelectric generator, it can occupy this uh, uneven surface and without any air gas, it can absorb the whole body heat of the human body and another side temperature will be the ambient temperature and due, due to that temperature gradient of temperature, this kind of flexible thermoelectric generators can give a high efficiency for power generations. Uh, that is the reason why these thermoelectric modules, uh, they are showing an up, uh, upsurge in the overall uh, economical point of view. In the near, coming near future, they'll reach to maybe 1,250 USD dollars. Uh, and not just because of this uh, direct conversion efficiency, the area where we uh, are focusing, the area where researchers are focusing is the application oriented. Everyone is going for that smart devices, smart watches, smart garments. Uh, my professor already talked about the flexo uh, thermoelectric generator uh, with biomechanical shoe in sole for uh, uh, health monitoring, like, uh, for sleep monitoring of a uh, person and for various other mobile applications. That is why uh, this upsurge in the thermoelectric model market can be seen. And uh, the next thing is, uh, uh, not just the th uh, thermoelectric generator, as a human being we are moving outside the environment. So we are uh, anyways uh, coming in contact with the uh, environmental effects like solar energy. So why not we hybrid the thermoelectric generator along with the already available photo uh, photovoltaic effects. So there comes uh, my part to play along with uh, the photovoltaic, the audience will also play a role and we are trying to hybrid it in the uh, fabric based devices. So uh, the flexibility issue will get resolved. Already we are wearing fabrics, so that uh, commercialization issue will be resolved uh, by, uh, while going through this uh, variable applications of uh, the hybrid photothermoelectric generators. The next part is how we are doing it. Already in uh, the commercial uh, thermoelectric generators, they are in five type uh, model. So uh, we are trying to make it in another form of a PIN type uh, model. Uh, so here if you see in this figure number 7, uh, there are two fabrics, one is N-type and one is P-type. Uh, so the N-type and P-type uh, here can be shown in the Pi type But the another form we have made is uh, the N-type, P-type and in between we have a business celluloid uh, which will be acting like the, which will be acting for the uh, I-type layer and which will be the main element for the production of the thermoelectric uh, power. So uh, this is how we have done it using the uh, thermal evaporation technique. Next is the result part of the work. Uh, here you see in this figure number nine, uh, uh, the, uh, this side, uh, the left side of uh, uh, the image shows the entire this uh, central part is the business celluloid that will act as an I type. And the right hand side for me is showing like the cotton fabric which will be uh, the P-type material. So an overall configuration what we have done is for P-I-N and uh, uh, this is uh, this will be supposed to be acting like a photothermal power generation. Yes. Uh, so this uh, IV characteristics we have studied under four different conditions. 
where the sunlight will be present and sunlight will be absent. Another is the body temperature will be present and body temperature will be absent. So four different uh, uh, situations we have varied in all the four different situations. We can see that the device is uh, giving a omic uh, kind of behavior and it is uh, uh, finally able to produce uh, to resist the environment uh, with the, uh, this. Uh, the next thing is uh, we have also tried uh, this. Uh, with the bulk material device and in environment it is uh, supposed to be like uh, 0.67 millivolt for just 4 pair of uh, P and N type thermoelectric legs and when we have fabricated on the conductive fabric uh, in the presence of the sunlight and the body temperature along with the environmental uh, impact it is able to produce 31.3 uh, millivolt uh, for barely 2 degree Celsius of body and uh, environment temperature difference but how well, when I go for uh, Pulse device and I have on the hot bed and in that case as well it is uh, even after having a temperature gradient of along uh, 50 uh, degrees Celsius it is producing only 1.3 uh, millivolts. So uh, the next is uh, not just the uh, conductive fabric silver and cotton we uh, silver and carbon we are focusing on very uh, uh, different kind of fabrics and we are using a different technique to understand if uh, we can go forward with uh, uh, the cost reduction of uh, bare fabrics uh, what we use general purpose and uh, in conclusion I'd like to say that not just photo uh, uh, thermoelectric uh, effect we can include the photovoltaic effect to enhance the performance of any flexible thermoelectric generators as well. Thank you. Any question from the audience? So you are saying that uh, because of the material you are developing, it's fabric based. Yes. Do you think you are the like you know first kind of who's doing this in the world? Not exactly. What is the new? Right? Yes, the new idea here is uh, we are trying to make it on uh, conductive fabrics. Okay. Yes, so that fabric also we are trying to develop on our own. So we are looking into that. Uh, but uh, currently we have uh, silver based and uh, con uh, that carbon based fabrics. On that we have incorporated bismuth telluride. So uh, that is the state of art material. So starting with that this material, right, we are understanding the whole process. In that process, we came to understand that uh, with uh, commercial available things, we can go for uh, devices and nobody is looking into such kind of uh, factors. They are all, always looking into the material aspects, but not on the device aspects. So that is, and fabric is something which is already in our daily life. So we can have some kind of patches on our body and we can use it on the go. So no need to uh, power up on smart marches or even mobile phones. So that is what we are doing here. Yes, yes. Can we wash them? Yes, that is washable because, uh, yes, that is washable. Uh, but just we have to look into the encapsulation. So in my slide, uh, that is important. Yes, so here if you see in my figure number 11, so here is the bulk material thermoelectric generator. On that I have encapsulated the uh, silicon elastomer. So the same material uh, we have encapsulated on the fabric based uh, device as well. So water, acid. Did you find any, let's say, interest from industry or government or other government organizations for this kind of project? Uh, currently not, but uh, that is I guess uh, has to be. First we have to uh, look into more aspects and then we can go for this commercial kind of things. Thank you. Okay, our next speaker, speaker is Suhasini. Yeah. So she is going to talk about PN Junction thermoelectric generator with ultra high output power for wearable devices. Right. So you have six minutes for your presentation. Yes, please.
to all. I am Sulasmi. I am doing research work under the guidance of Professor Kumar sir and the SRM Institute of Science and Technology Chennai. So my contents are introduction, literature review, result and discussion, conclusion and references. So introduction. So nowadays the wearable devices uh, which you are using for uh, health monitoring, so all the devices are powered by batteries. So every time we need to recharge the battery or replace the battery. So what is the yeah, possible solution for that? So your possible solution is the renewable energy source. So by using a renewable energy harvesting technique, so we can make a cell power system. So like if I consider if I consider a transit user, it convert your one form of energy into the another form of energy. So your physical input, physical signal has been converted to uh, electrical signal and then we can store it into the output conditioning using a capacitor and then we can use it for your uh, wearable application. So that is our motto. And uh, if, you, if you could see the energy harvesting technique, there are many energy harvesting techniques are available. From 1821, Thomson Seebach has invented uh, Seebach effect, followed by 1995, William uh, has invented electromagnetic vibration. There are many energy harvesting techniques are available in that. If you see the scale of energy harvesting technique, so there is a macro energy harvesting and micro energy harvesting. Depend on, depends on the how much amount of energy has been harvested, it has been scaled to two. One is the greater than watts, and next is the, which is in the range of nanowatts to milliwatt. So if you could see the uh, vibration and motion uh, energy harvesting, it can be comes under the micro energy harvesting, where uh, thermal energy harvesting technique has comes under the micro energy, as well as for uh, solar energy harvesting comes, uh, com comes under the micro as well as the macro energy harvesting. And if you could see the, uh, for wearable application, if you could see any uh, renewable energy, at the environmental point of view, it should be a, a clean energy, sustainable energy. Uh, as compared to the solar uh, solar energy, so the thermoelectric energy is a clean energy, uh, noiseless, and it is environmental point of view, it's a uh, very sustainable energy, and it can be useful for the wearable application since it's a very small in size. So that's the reason we, are, we have uh, taken as a thermoelectric energy harvesting technique in my application. So as we know that what is a thermoelectric effect, it has been a temperature difference has been converted into uh, electrical energy, the vice versa is a built effect. So the performance has been uh, multi, uh, measured by the figure of mult ZT. ZT is equal to S square sigma by kappa. So if you need a material which has a high sigma and a high, uh, high electrical conductivity and low internal conductivity, we need to choose the material accordingly to get the high performance of the material. So as we know that, so with respect to the carrier concentration, so semiconductor material are most suitable material for the thermoelectric application. And if you could see the, uh, depends on the waste heat recovery, for the low temperature waste heat recovery, for example, uh, sensor and solar cells, we can uh, get the um, uh, waste heat recovery with the range of uh, 0 to 250 degree Celsius. Yeah, bismuth is a very good material. If the temperature range of 250 degree Celsius to 50 degree Celsius, cutter is a very helpful material. Uh, when if you go for the 550 to 700 degree Celsius or high temperature waste heat recovery material, uh, this can be a power uh, uh, power plants and steel, so in those energy. So in my application, I am concentrating for the wearable application since it is a low power. So I have taken a bismuth as a th thermoelectric material. So as we know that, so if you consider the ambient energy and uh, human body energy, that is the temperature difference. So this temperature temperature difference by using a thermoelectric application, we can use as a um, wearable application. Uh, we can uh, harvest the energy, not only by using that one. So when we place the device on my uh, 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 in the different body place, for example, uh, if the uh, person is seated, so the total heat emission is 100 watt, and then uh, if you seat at light work, 120 watt, and then if the uh, person is athletic, so 520 amount of total heat is wasted. So in that, some amount of has energy has been harvested by using a thermoelectric energy harvesting technique. So my uh, work is the PN junction. So what is PN junction? So basically a thermoelectric device which has the hot electrode and cold electrode. So if you remove the hot electrode on this one, so we can reduce the uh, ohmic contact, also it can reduce the uh, thermal stress. So that is my motto. Uh, so also the uh, if you could see the, uh, the P and N type material has been connected at the hot side so that it lacked as a P N junction thermoelectric device. And uh, here I have proposed the five types of thermoelectric device. Five types of the, in the first type if you see that uh, figure A shows that this is a conventional thermoelectric device C A. It's a, otherwise called as a pi type. Uh, then uh, figure B shows that the blue color indicates both are P material and N material. This is one form of P N junction where here, this is a PN junction and this is an N junction in C type, uh, where in a, uh, D diagram shows that the inverted L uh, shape of uh, different forms of uh, P, uh, PN junction, uh, where E uh, diagram shows that uh, P and N junction without any metallic insert on the top side, where F uh, figure, uh, figure shows that the P material, N material with the metallic insert layer. So the metallic insert layer which has the HA by H ratio, that I have optimized using an optimization tool. 
so and these are the material property and the uh, boundary condition which i uh, which i used for my material selection and uh, uh, this is the device performance which i uh, which i analyzed by using the formula with this voc and then power which i measured then internal resistance uh, uh, for the uh, thermoelectric material we have uh, uh, um, uh, calculated by using this formula and if you could see the uh, with the metallic insert layer and without metallic insert layer so that is type 5 and type 4 so we have optimized the uh, metallic insert layer hi ratio so the hi by h ratio is equal to 0 0.1 so the metallic insert layer we are using snpb layer all the uh, copper layer so the hi by h ratio is equal to 0 0.1 mm uh, 2.3 mm we can achieve the more power of 30 milliwatt yes yeah, 30 milliwatt and then if the length is equal to 0, so we have achieved is uh, uh, 18 milliwatt. So if you could see that the width type, type 5 source is the very highest uh, output power. And if you consider uh, compare with the other type with the pi type, so uh, the with type 5 with the metallic insert layer which shows the highest output power of 13.110 uh, uh, milliwatt power since it has a very less internal resistance. So that's the reason we got it. And we have fabricated two forms of uh, device with a four pair. So the figure uh, A shows that uh, with the copper layer PN junction diode, uh, Figure B shows that uh, nickel cop nickel copper coated uh, fabric uh, uh, layer. So these are the two form of uh, PN junction we have fabricated, and this is the fabrication steps: electrode position and then uh, solder layer, uh, followed by placement of TE layer and bonding formation with uh, uh, UV ray curing, and then conductive wire is placed. And here there is no hot electrode is present. That's called PN junction. And we have analyzed with the use of body uh, body heat uh, with placing ice bag and without placing ice bag. So when we are placing ice bag, we can come to know that what is the temperature, more temperature difference. For example, uh, for the PN junction with the CE electrode at a temperature gradient of 1 Kelvin, we achieved 0.8 milliwatt. Uh, with the uh, with ice bag, we got the temperature gradient of 20 Kelvin, so we achieved 9 milliwatt. So it shows that temperature difference increases, the output voltage increases. And we have compared the simulation result and experimental result. So it shows that the compare with the, yes. We, uh, with the uh, compa, copper layer shows the highest output power and uh, we have done the experiment based on hot plate. Uh, the PNCU electrode shows the highest output power of 47.12 microwatt than compared to other devices. So and we are compared with the existing literature. So our device shows, shows that at 1 nano, uh, at one mm square per mm square it shows a 7.2 nanowatt at delta T 1 Kelvin. So this is my conclusion. So at uh, temperature difference of 1 Kelvin, so my device is uh, the proposed device with the copper electrode produces highest output power of 7.2 nanowatt. That's also. Thank you. There are some references. Thank you. Any questions from the audience? Okay, so can you just tell us what is the novelty or uniqueness in your finding for the community lens? What? For the community, for the science. For the science. So here, sir, um, yeah, the figure F. So this is the new novelty one. So here uh, we have uh, discussed about the PN junction. Actually, the normal uh, conventional diode which has the hot electrode. So which you see the A diagram. So which has a hot electrode. So due to the hot electrode, there is a more ohmic. So that the resistance has increases. So if I revoke that hot electrode, so the resistivity of the device is reduces. If the resistivity of the device is reduces, we ultimately will get the highest output power. So that is the one novelty. And then the HA by H ratio, the metallic insert layer, if I if I keep present, so the separation charge, uh, the depletion region, so there will be a more accumulation of charge carriers. So that highest amount of power will be generated. So that is the novelty of my work. Okay, now the last speaker is Australia. So she's going to talk about cellulose fabric with boron dope, uh, AL2 FE3 nanostructure by hydrothermal process for wearable applications. So you have six minutes for your presentation.
So good evening everybody, myself Aisharya, uh, I am a PhD scholar at IIIT DM under Dr. Pandya Vishen Vedaswami and Dr. Karthik Chandrasekharan. So uh, I will be talking today about the cellulose fabric with boron dot air to FP3 nanostructure by hydrothermal process for wearable applications. So uh, I will be trying to cover like uh, why we started this, why we did this and what were the objective of doing this work and some literature reviews, uh, the materials and methods and the certain discussion and conclusion. So if we talk about the uh, energy har harvesting, uh, like almost uh, only the only th about 34 percentage of the total energy available to us is uh, being used, we are able to use. The remaining 60, 66 percentage of energy which is available totally is getting wasted. So now there is a uh, global demand for uh, environmentally safe and sustainable energy harvesting techniques. Uh, wh wh how thermoelectric stands uh, here in the way is that uh, because uh, thermoelectric materials uh, they can perform direct conversion of uh, heat to uh, electric electricity. So uh, it has it is a very high it has got very high potential for the conversion of uh, for the uh, harvesting of energy from uh, temperature. And also thermoelectric materials uh, they have no moving parts uh, attached to its operating unit that is one advantage. Uh, also no we don't have to do any particular chemical reactions uh, for this operation. And also it is not causing any particular harm to nature. So these advantages make uh, thermoelectric uh, generation from um, thermoelectric generation. Uh, very important or uh, advantageous. But the problem that we face currently is that uh, low energy conversion efficiency and large material cost for thermoelectric materials. Uh, it is limiting the uh, use of uh, this met particular method for the uh, extraction of heat from temperature. So the, to talk about the thermoelectric conversion efficiency, uh, we have to uh, use the term uh, the figure of merit ZT. Uh, which is equal to the S, uh, which is equal to S square sigma by sigma t by uh, kappa. And here are some uh, literature review currently which has been done, like uh, in a paper with the title with the title effects of aluminium content on thermoelectric performance of aluminium, uh, cobalt, uh, chromium, iron, nickel, high entropy alloys. Uh, they have investigated the effect of aluminium content on thermoelectric performance of this particular composite uh, for high entropy alloys. The, uh, the reported that uh, an enhanced SETI value was there with the increase in the uh, aluminium content. And uh, hydrothermal synthesis and uh, thermoelectric transport properties of uniform single crystalline whole necklace shaped PVT nanowires. In that particular paper, um, hydrothermally synthesized pearl necklace shaped PVT nanowires were having an average diameter of 30 nanometer. Mm, they reported that an enhanced CP coefficient of uh, 307 microvolt per Kelvin uh, at room temperature. So the objectives of this particular work is to design and fabricate boron dot LTF3 flexible films on cotton fabric by uh, particularly hydrothermal synthesis technique and uh, to tune their carrier density in the LTF3 nanocomposites by uh, incorporating the uh, boron acid dopant into the precursor medium. So uh, how it was done is that uh, first the sample was uh, the sample cotton sam cotton fab fabric was stirred in uh, AL AL FeCl3 and AlCl3 uh, 6H2O solution and it was kept in an autoclave and uh, treated high with high temperature and then it was dried and we got the final product. Mm, and scoring process has been done to remove the unwanted materials from the uh, cotton fab fabric which is available in the market. And then a uh, precursor solution has been prepared and then seed creation was done and then uh, the growth of it. Uh, we tried with four different samples where in two samples boron was used as dopen and in the other two boron was not used. The uh, samples in which boron were not used were uh, made for the comparison of the sample. So uh, from the characterization results like XRD, uh, we could confirm the presence of uh, boron, aluminium and Fe. Uh, very nicely on the cotton fabric and and the uh, same characterization results also uh, showed the same uh, there were uh, presence of uh, spherical uh, nanoparticles uh, which confirmed the presence of aluminium uh, iron and boron and UPF factor also we measured it showed that the second sample uh, in which uh, 
uh, aluminium and Fe was used in 1 is to 2 ratio, 2 is to 1 ratio, the UPF factor was really high. And uh, we tried to uh, do the heat uh, um, energy harvesting by making a thermoelectric module uh, by using the, this particular sample which we made as the uh, P type uh, part and uh, using uh, by using bismuth telluride as the N type part. And so the conclusions uh, here, which I uh, I would like to con I would like to conclude with like highest intensity peak was observed at 22.96 uh, angle. Angle, which is in good agreement with earlier data corresponding to the cellulose fabric according to the JCPDS card number 51364. Also comparing the peaks, peaks in pure cellulose nanostructure uh, ground data, uh, the peaks cor corresponding to the nanoparticles were also very evident. And the seed and growth samples uh, of the synthesized fabric show diffraction peaks corresponding to aluminium and iron indicating the formation of nanostructures on the fabric. And the uh, stem images of samples shows the growth of boron dot LTFE3 nanostructures on the cellulose fabric also. The day before yesterday, I announced that we will be giving uh, best uh, oral presentation uh, prize of rupees uh, 2100. But today I thought that because the team was different, the referees were different. So we will be bifurcating this prize into 1100 for today and 1100 for that day. So uh, Mithun, Mithun, who was uh, there on the day before yesterday, he, he got the first prize for that day presentation. And yesterday, uh, Priya, can I make Farheem, sorry, my uh, Yesterday, postal presentation, first prize was given to Farheem. And for today, they are uh, reading the result. But uh, the money is with me already. <laughs> So, uh, on behalf of MRSI, I am treasurer of MRSI Rajasthan chapter. I call for him to collect her cash prize of rupees 1100. She is from IIT Kanpur. He will come in the evening and collect his money. I have already talked with his professor, Pradyuman sir, to send him. So uh, it was a modest uh, effort by our team, uh, so Mr. Ravi Pada. Uh, Kundir sir and uh, our uh, Lokesh Lodha, uh, these three were the key persons who helped me uh, to organize this particular event. Although, although there was a system uh, which was working behind the scenes, but they are the people who were there 24 by 7 with me. So uh, let us thank, uh, although we will do it tomorrow, but Abhibi Aap Logo Se Jitne Log Present Hai, let us clap for our team. Along with these uh, few guys, uh, the team of our MSC students. Aayye Beta Bahar Aayye Aap Logo. One by one Aadhi Aadhi. They are also, they are writing uh, certificates for you, which we will be distributing tomorrow. Abhi Kisi Ko Nii Denge, Hana? So tomorrow, uh, these are the students of our MSC. Aap Bhi Piche Bethe Na Beta? Khade Hoye, Khade Hoye, Khade Hoye. They are also working. Uh, yes, very good. So let us clap for them also.
So the first prize goes to Sohasini S. <laughs> so thank you everyone. Uh, the tea is waiting outside and after that we will meet tomorrow again. Thank you very much. Thank you.